With Ben McKee, Brent Hubbs, VolQuest.com, we go around the horn on this Saturday afternoon as Tennessee falls in the series finale to Georgia. Volunteers lose 8-3 after an ugly seventh inning on the mound for Tennessee. Uh, ben, let's just talk about the the, the pitching uh, rotation today. What, what was Tony Vitello's takeaway uh, after the game was over about the decisions he made on who to start with Ben Joyce and, and in what he – did not see out of Drew Beam in the, in the seventh inning when he brought him in. Yeah, I, I think there's a couple of reasons as to why Ben Joyce started. Uh, the, the first being that uh, the objective this weekend, as we discussed the last two nights, uh, I wrote a story on it. The objective this weekend was to get Drew Beam and Chase Burns rest. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but Tony Vitello said post game that he did not feel comfortable with allowing two freshmen to go the entire season shouldering the, the load. I mean, there were only two Tennessee pitchers entering the weekend who had thrown more than 60 innings, and they were the two freshmen. So that is the main reason you saw neither one of them start. That's a reason. The other reason Ben Joyce starts on, on Saturday is because they, they do feel like Ben Joyce isn't a one-inning guy. They, they feel like Ben Joyce can start games and, and pitch deep into games despite his – velocity because of the the freak that he is in the weight room he's conditioned his body to allow him to to go throw 70 80 90 pitches in a game whatever it may be now they're not going to do that two weekends before you go to hoover or three weekends before you start uh the ncaa tournament there's there's no need to push ben joyce that much and i think he ended up being around 70 pitches on the day um so a drew beam chase burns they needed a, a weekend off essentially b uh, they feel like Ben Joyce can start. Uh, Tony Vitell flat out said, talking to scouts uh, as if they were in attendance, uh, that there's no reason that Ben Joyce shouldn't get an opportunity to start games at the next level in professional baseball. So that, that's kind of where you, why you saw Ben Joyce start. Uh, Tony said that he didn't really make that decision until midnight last night and then slept on it and, and felt convicted to do so when he woke up this morning. And uh, with, with Drew Beam, he didn't really speak to, to what went wrong for Drew uh, today. Obviously gave up the three singles, uh, led to a big seventh inning there. As as you mentioned, Redmond Walsh comes in with one out. He's not able to work out of a jam. I didn't know bunts were still uh, allowed in baseball, but Georgia puts down a beautiful bunt, a sack bunt to, to score a run, and then a two-run single, uh, and then a two-run home run really opens up the game. But uh, it just seemed like Drew kind of didn't have that same command that we saw at the beginning of the season. Uh, just leaving pitches over the middle of the zone and, and Georgia was able to barrel up some baseballs and, and hit some singles there. Uh, but in terms of him just coming out of the bullpen, uh, I, again, it's just Tony and, and Frank Anderson trying not to allow them to pitch so much throughout the regular season, give them somewhat of a break uh, before you enter postseason. Do, do you think that they take away from this that maybe Chase Burns can handle being a bullpen guy more than, than Beam can be handled being a, a bullpen guy? Because, look, getting ready to start a game is different than warming up in the bullpen to come in and play the game. So you kind of wonder how guys are going to handle that. Burns seemed to be okay with it, lost, a, lost it a little bit, but I don't think that was because he was in the bullpen. Drew Beam just never got off to a good start today with that. Do you think that's something they keep in their back pocket when they try to determine a rotation in postseason play? Absolutely. And I do think that was a, another reason as to why you saw such a, a shakeup in the pitching plans this weekend, because uh, as Kirby Connell put it after the game, when he was asked kind of, hey, what do you say to Drew Beam and Chase Burns about coming out of the bullpen? He said flat out that, that you got to be ready to come in at, at a moment's notice. At the drop of a hat, you've got to be able to, to get ready, get warm in the bullpen and go in and be effective from the jump. And, and you may not be starting the inning uh, with nobody on base, no outs or, or whatever. You, you may not come in with a clean inning. You may be coming in like Redmond Walsh did today, bases loaded, one out, and, and you've got to work out of a, a jam that, that's in a tie game. You, you've got to be able to handle those situations. But in terms of it being just another reason as to why you saw changes with the pitching this weekend, it's good for Burns and Beam to have those repetitions of coming out of the bullpen as you're going in to the postseason. Year after year, whether it be at some point regional weekend or, or super regionals or Omaha, you see teams, it, if it's the, the ninth inning and you've got to get somebody out, the game's on the line. In college baseball, teams are not afraid to go to a, 
ace uh, in that situation. Even if that that ace or the best arm on the staff, it's two days ago. They'll bring them in at a moment's notice and get that guy in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning, whatever it may be. You see professional teams do that in, in the MLB playoffs. So I think it's good for Beam and Burns to have those repetitions going into the postseason because you just never know. As Tony has continued to say this week, roles have flown out the window this time of year. You, you never know what you're going to be called upon to do. So uh, I do think that is good for them to have in their arsenal that they can bring Burns and Beam out and, and better for them to have their first appearance out of the bullpen this weekend against the Georgia instead of regional weekend or super regional or, or even Omaha. That, that You don't want them doing something for the first time in Omaha. Get it over with now. Let them learn how to do it and, and then go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Kirby Connell, by the way. A great weekend for him throwing the baseball. But, let, but let's get – before I circle back to big picture pitching-wise, let, let's talk about Tennessee at the plate. They had a chance in the sixth. Couldn't get it done. Three strikeouts there. Bases loaded in the fourth. They only get one run across but because of strikeouts. Um, they had a base running blunder in the first inning that, that probably cost them a run as, as well. Not not their most polished day at, at the plate and did not take advantage of opportunities that they had early in the game to really push that Georgia pitching staff. Yeah, it felt like uh, the Kentucky game last Thursday night where uh, you kept getting on base, but you, you were getting on base and you weren't getting any hits. I mean, Tennessee drew six walks on the day, but only had five hits. So even though they only had five hits, they, they were still getting guys on base, but uh, they, they could not hit with runners on base. The, the, the final number, at least going into the ninth inning, uh, I believe they were one for eight uh, with, with runners on base and uh, one for 10 or so, something like that with runners in scoring position. The, the big stat uh, in terms of those categories, 0 for three with the bases loaded, 0 for three, even worse, 0 for three, with a runner on third, less than two outs. That just can't happen. It's not good baseball, and, and they were just in a funk at the plate today. Just, just not a good day at all. Uh, the approaches did, did not look good. Uh, several guys striking out, looking with the bases loaded, and you, you had the bases loaded, no outs, and, and the only way you're able to score a run is because Cortland Lawson walks, and, and there were several other instances. We could talk about it all day long. It just simply was not a good day at the plate they, they were able to get on base via walks but then when they got on base weren't able to do anything with it and it just seemed like the approach was off because you haven't seen this Tennessee team you've seen them struggle but you haven't seen them strike out numerous times just watching pitches go right down the middle of the plate all right so let's, let's look big picture here uh, obviously one weekend series left in the regular season then you get into postseason play so so it's time to start looking at those things when you cover a team as well as you have when you follow a team as closely as fans have, you start to pick scabs this time of year. I mean, little things, right? So, so let me throw a couple things at you and, and ask you, is this a concern or no big deal? Last nine SEC games, Tennessee's five and four as a team, playing 500 baseball basically in conference play. And the last 15 conference, conference games, they've had a starting pitcher go more than five innings three times and they have a, they've had a starter not make it to the fourth inning three times. Are you concerned about either one of those stats when you look at this baseball team with the postseason staring down the barrel of the bat in two weeks? Yeah, I mean, how can you not be concerned? Now, I'm not freaking out, and I still think they're the favorite to go to Hoover and win the SEC tournament, and I think they should still make it to Omaha and, and do some damage in Omaha, but how can you not be at least a little bit concerned and, and particularly with the pitching that you mentioned, because I think it's obviously fair to say that Drew Beam, Chase Burns, they've taken a, a step back uh, from my vantage point. It, it looks like they've, they've hit a freshman wall, which is why you saw the pitching approach with those two in particular this weekend. I, I think the staff sees them hitting a wall as well, and, and this weekend was trying to recharge their batteries. Now, I'll be curious to see if if maybe this weekend ends up messing them up even more, uh, just kind of being thrown out of their routine and then potentially being thrown back into the routine that they were in. Uh, I, Drew Beans had a heck of a season, but I, he didn't necessarily handle coming out of the bullpen all that well today. And, and maybe it was just kind of baseball catching up to him. They were just three singles uh, consecutively. So it, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. He, he wasn't out there just walking guy after guy. I think that would be a bigger concern. But not only does it appear that the two freshmen have hit a wall, but they haven't been able to get Blake Tidwell going just yet. Now, we talked about this the other night. I do think he made progress this weekend. And Tony Vitello uh, 
doubled down on that. He said the other night, immediately after the game, that he thought Blade made progress. And then today after the game, when he was asked to reflect on the pitching for the weekend, he said that he felt even more convicted about Blade progressing this weekend when he went back and watched the video. So uh, they haven't been able to get Blade going just yet, but it does seem like they are on the verge of getting Blade going. And, and then there's some guys in the bullpen as well. I mean, Will Mabry maybe seems to have hit, and, have hit a wall. He didn't pitch this weekend until – uh, the, the end of the final game, uh, and, and he did look good, but uh, the, the game had already kind of been blown open by that point. And uh, so I, I think that's the thing that's more concerning, Brent. It's just the pitching. It seems to, to be – it's not trending upwards like maybe you thought it was a month ago when you knew that Blake Tidwell was coming back and uh, Ben Joyce is starting to become a little more unleashed. Uh, and then, the what was it, five and four last nine SEC games – how can I mean you, you want to be playing your best baseball um, going into to, to the postseason? I mean, two of those losses I, I do think were circumstantial up in Lexington, the weather and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I mean, five and four doesn't sound pretty. So how could you not be at least a little bit concerned as as Hoover's two weekends away? For this baseball team, it's back to another regular week—a Tuesday night game, back to Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then there will be a couple of extra days because of the 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 buy situation at Hoover. Is is it important that this team get a day or two off there? I mean, it's been a grind, okay. Let, let's and, and college baseball is, but but they've been in the midweek, you know, weekend series games. They haven't had a rain out. They haven't had anything to really um, give them a chance to catch their breath. They've been very much in that routine. How, how much do you think these guys? maybe need a couple of days off um, but, uh, between the end of the regular season and the start of postseason play? I think they certainly need a day off. Uh, now, I think it's more mental. Uh, and they need a mental break more than a, a physical break. Now, Evan Russell, he needs a, a physical break. I mean, that poor guy, uh, he, he's just been beat up <laughs> weekend after weekend. And in the extra innings that I did uh, with him this, this past week, I, I can't remember if he told me before I pressed record or – uh, he, he mentioned this on the recording, but uh, he, he told me that the, the Sunday after getting back from Lexington, he could barely get out of bed. Uh, and he, he's fine by the time the, the week rolls around, but or the, the games roll around. But he needs a physical break. But I, I think for everybody else, or from a team standpoint, I, I think they need a mental break more than anything as they regroup and, and head into Hoover, just because they're, they're the top team in the country. Everybody in the world knows about them. They, they've been the top dog, and, and they have been the ones who have been hunted week after week after week. And there's not been a, a mental break for them whatsoever. They, they've not been able to lay in the weeds. Like, like in Arkansas, they, they've got to be loving all the attention that Tennessee's getting because they're just kind of staying back and nobody's really talking about them. And Tennessee's the, the one with, with all the media members talking about them and uh, the other teams coming for the neck each and every week. So I think a good mental break will be – uh, more important than a than, than a couple of off days to, to get the body right. That's obviously going to benefit them as well. But I think the mental break will will serve them well than than the physical break. Well, Tennessee takes the home weekend series against Georgia in the process. They win the SEC regular season title. So it was not a bad weekend for Tennessee. It was a bad seventh inning for Tennessee on the hill and a bad couple of innings at the plate for the Volunteers that prevented them from blowing this thing open to wrap up the series. Tennessee back in action on Tuesday night and then off to Starkville, Mississippi for another Thursday, Friday, Saturday set. Full coverage of Tennessee baseball continuing to cover up. That's going to do it for this edition of uh, around the horn. He has been McKee. I'm Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com.